This is what your garden looks like after almost a week of violent weather. Sunday night we had something like four inches of rain. Monday night, I think there were tornadoes in the area, but we didn't have any here, but we had a lot of trees down. Tuesday night, tornadic storms. Wednesday morning, straight line wind storm. So, uh, and all the while, very, very high humidity and fairly high heat. Around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what we've been through. And the garden has kind of stopped new production. We do have we're going to lose another couple of pumpkins to uh, squash bugs, but those are over on the Magic Lantern side, so I kind of expected that. Uh, there may be one new pumpkin on the uh, Corvette side. I'm not sure though. All in all, Corvette has done much, much better than Magic Lantern. Stands up to squash bugs better. Seems less delicious to squash bugs. They don't attack it as much. Not real high production. That's why I'm going to grow it alongside Racer Plus next year because I also like to get lots of pumpkins instead of just, just a few. But all in all, this is a very, very sturdy pumpkin as far as I can tell. There's one of them growing there. All the rain made the uh, the pumpkins that are growing much bigger. And what else do we have? We're going to have some more Marconis in the coming days. So I'm looking forward to that. We finally had several full dew jalapeno. And uh, I know I said last week that I will be growing them again next year. Now I doubt it because they taste exactly like green peppers. Why bother? <laughs> Just grow green peppers. So uh, that's what I'll be doing next year. Uh, they are fun. And I, I've been wanting to grow them for years. But... Just grow a green pepper, you'll get the same flavor. Uh, I'm disappointed because I know jalapenos have their own flavor aside from the heat. And these just don't have it. Plus, they're small. So if you use them for cooking, you have to use several at once, like I did off that plant over there. If I've got that plant on my monitor. So, uh, yeah... Not real thrilled, but it is a thrill to grow a pepper plant from seed and have it do as well as these have done. It's hard to do. Tam jalapeno, I probably will grow next year, especially since they're selling it in the garden centers already grown. So uh, people are liking it. It's a little too spicy for me, but people seem to like it. And the tomato plants responded to the storms by dropping tomatoes. So we had a few green tomatoes that I had to give away. Just dropped off the vine, nothing wrong with them. I'm going to have to spray the plants today because they're getting attacked by uh, fungi. Over here, This is Bush Champion Cucumber, and this is the best cucumber season I have had in at least a decade. Uh, I think I had one good season when I moved out here, so I'll take that back five years ago, but this is, uh, it's been amazing. And there, speaking of amazing, there's Miss Mila. I'll be right back. Okay, we're now at the back of the garden. I have given Mila her treats and she is happy. 
There are now frogs living in here, little ones. And I will not get them on screen because every time they see me, they jump into the water. I'm wondering if they're baby bullfrogs. Uh, not sure what they are. And I think the fish are still in there because every time I put food in there, they it disappears. Unless the frogs are eating the food, but I don't think they are. So, all the green greenage you see down here is, uh, what would that be? Water lettuce. Over here is water hyacinth. And underneath, there's a lot of hornworts. And over here we have miniature cattails. <coughs> Not producing cattails this year, but someone told me that they are biennials, so maybe next year. And let's go over here to our mystery cur curcubit. It had a female flower on it, but I think the female flower is dying without opening, which is pretty typical of a first female flower on a plant, a curcubit. And, uh, where is it? I think it's right there. It's a little round thing. Little round white thing. So, we still don't know what this is. The uh, squash bugs don't seem to like it, which is great. But we still don't know what it is, as I said. Maybe we'll find out in the next few weeks. And since all the stormage, Howden is not happy. That's all I can say. Uh, I had a baby pumpkin on it. We lost it. it went all squishy, so I took it off. Uh, no real squash bug attacks, but not a lot of happiness either. So, uh, And it seems to be related to all the storms. I don't see any female. Oh, I do. There's a female on there. No, there isn't. So we'll see what happens with Howden. It's one of those things that happens. And our sunflowers all had to be propped up. Every last one of them. So I did save the seeds from the two interesting sunflowers. That's how it goes. You had to prop them up. So, next we'll go to our lecture, <laughs> such as it is, on pests. More pests. <clears throat> there we go, got some radishes. More pests in the, uh, the pumpkin garden. So we will do that in a moment. Last week I discussed pests in the pumpkin garden and I only discussed squash bugs because for the last couple of years they have been a huge problem for me. Uh, last year I think I asked for it because I put paper down before I planted the pumpkins and later on I read that squash bugs just love to have orgies under paper. So no more paper ever again for me. Next year I will be growing in containers and I think Corvette is perfect for that because the vines are extremely short. I, I think previously I mentioned short vine pumpkins can get up to 12 feet long. These don't even get to 5 feet. So if you're growing in containers, I think this is the pumpkin for you. Uh, Racer Plus gets up to about 12 feet, so I'm going to give that they're going to be grown in containers, but I'm going to grow them in the containers that have the most running room around them, uh, even though they won't use that much. So anyway, this week we'll talk about cucumber beetles. The reason I haven't mentioned cucumber beetles is that I don't have many in this garden. Uh, they were a huge problem where I used to live. 
The thing I noticed about cucumber beetles that makes them difficult for me to control is that they tend to hang out in the flowers when the flowers are open. What I read online, University of Minnesota Extension site, said that they defoliate the leaves. Probably they do that too. And the other thing they do, one, one type of cucumber beetle carries a, uh, a bacteria that, which causes a disease called bacterial wilt in pumpkins and other curcubits. And uh, that is incurable and it kills the plant very, very quickly. Uh, squash bugs at least don't carry that, but cucumber beetles do. So anyway, I found them difficult to control because, as I said, in my garden they congregated in the open flowers. And if you spray an open flower, you're also spraying bees. So it was, it was a challenge. The only, I guess the only choice is to spray them when you see them in a place other than, uh, than the open flower which I didn't see them very often in my old garden. Or they have a lot of cucumber beetle traps that they sell now. Uh, try one of those and trap them and then get rid of them. So, uh, yeah, if you've got those, and I, I know they're a problem for a lot of people, uh, try anything not to spray the flowers if you see them hanging out in the flowers. That's all I can say. Try other methods. Spray them when they're on the leaves and the flowers are closed and, and so forth. So that's uh, cucumber beetles. The other thing is vine borers. And every spring or summer we're hearing about vine borers in our somebody's, no, what is our, our group called? Backyard Pumpkin Grower Society. Every year people are, are stressing about these. Um, they're is a method of injecting a bacteria into the vine that doesn't hurt anything but the vine borer. I can't find an online source for that. I know people do it. Uh, another thing that people do is cut the vine open and pluck the borer out. In my case, I've had them, but not often. And my vine, it happened to my racer plus vines. What happened was the vine grew another branch and sent down roots on that branch and continued living and producing. So I've been kind of lucky with vine borers. They haven't been a huge problem with me. So, uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say about vine borers. You will run into them, I can say that. I just don't stress about them. I think they probably would be more of a problem for a, a pumpkin like Corvette that doesn't really send out vines than a pumpkin that sends out vines and can just create another vine and, and work around the problem. Also, vine borers as far as I can see are only a problem in zone 5 in June. By July you're having squash bug problems and by August you're having uh, cucumber beetle problems. So that's all I know about the three main uh, insect pests of pumpkin vines. Next week we'll talk about the major disease pest, which is uh, powdery mildew. And um, one thing I'm finding with Corvette, I don't see any sign of powdery mildew by next week. I could see it, but right now uh, there's one or two leaves with some marks on them, but I, it's amazing I don't really see anything right now. So tune in next week to see a total disaster of pottery mildew, right? <laughs> anyway, that's our video for this week. See you next week.